In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Calendly and some of the advanced features. What's up, fam? Welcome back to Leveling Up with CMH. I'm your host, CMH, founder of Startup U, where we help people take their ideas and turn them into revenue generating businesses. For more on Startup U, like Startup University, make sure to check the description below. Also, don't forget to like this video, hit subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications for more videos like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So primarily speaking, I so I have I have coaching clients and I also host a podcast. So I have guests every single week come on my show. And using Calendly has been a game changer for a variety of reasons of which we're gonna talk about today. So one of the things that I really, really dig about it is that you can seamlessly integrate it with a lot of different tools. So I've seen people actually embed it on their website where they actually have a Calendly link or an actual calendar where people can schedule right there. So if you're a service provider, Calendly is a great, great, great option for you. But let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm gonna show you the basic features of Calendly and then I'm gonna show you how I use it specifically to maybe give you some ideas. Not to use it exactly how I use it, but just to show you kind of the range of what you can do using a tool like Calendly. So I'm gonna go to my screen and uh, show you exactly how to use this tool. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice when you log in to your Calendly account is you'll see that you have event types, right? So you can see I've created four different event types. Uh, now, when you have a free account, if they still even offer that, I don't even know that they do, um, but you can only create, I think, one event type for the free aspect, right? So once you exceed one or two, then you're gonna have to pay for a basic plan, which I think is like five to $15 a month. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, however, what you'll see is that I have office hours. This is for, for my company. So if people in the group, uh, in our, in our, if our employees want to sit down and meet with me virtually, then they can do so. And you can see this is set to group. So actually I can have more than one respondent, uh, actually apply and say, yes, I'm going to attend this event. Uh, whereas some of these are one-on-one -on -one basis, right? So these are select guests. These are people that we reach out to, to come on our podcast because we have two different funnels, right? So there's a calendar specifically for select guests. And then there's one for inbound requests. So it's two entirely, they're shadowed, right? They're exactly the same. They just kind of mirror each other, but there's two entirely different uh, channels for each one of those contingent upon whether it's inbound or outbound. There's a variety of reasons why we did it that way. Uh, and then uh, this is usually the one that we send to my clients, to my coaching clients uh, to schedule their 30 minute consultation. Uh, sometimes it'll be a little bit excessive. It'll be over that. So we can, we could have made one for 60 minutes. Usually uh, I, I'll pad this about an hour before and after. So if I do go over, we do go a full hour, uh, then I'll be able to do that. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, up at the top here, what you'll see is you have to actually have, you can view all of your scheduled events, right? So you can uh, actually filter it by event types as well. So if I want to look at, okay, who's coming up that's in uh, one of my coaching clients, right? Then I can click here, call a CMH. And right now it is empty because I've stopped taking clients for the interim basis. Uh, so we don't have any meetings, which is great because I'm working on my stuff. Uh, and then next, what you'll see is we could do our inbound requests, right? So you can just get, you can funnel all these, uh, so on and so forth. So I can look at the past, look at whatever. Obviously you're primarily focused on your upcoming. Uh, workflows is new. So I haven't really checked out this too, too much, but there are some things that I have used. Um, so I will show you, we're going to dive into that. Like I haven't used survey, for example, which I think is a great, great, great integration that I recommend you include specifically for like coaching calls or for things where you're seeking out potential client feedback, right? I think this is a great way, thing to do as a follow-up. I'll show you how I use my follow-up. It's a little bit different than feedback, but it basically is the same thing. So let's say we want to create a new event, right? So we're going to go here. Let's, let's just edit this event and I'll show you all the components of it. So you're going to put what your event is, right? Uh, let's go to a different one, actually. Let me show you, uh, let me show you this one. A little bit, there's a little bit more nuance to this one that I want you to see. Okay, so you'll sit, have your event type. Now, something that's really cool is that there's an integration with Zoom, right? So what I can do is when they book this event, they being the guests that are coming on my show, uh, if you have a meeting or something like that, it'll actually synchronize and, and, and allow you to create a Zoom meeting automatically. So if you have events or you have a, a frequency of events, in which case I do, uh, since it's weekly, creating a Zoom event every single time and sending the link is just a huge pain. So what they'll receive at the end is they'll get a calendar invite, like a, like a you know, a Gmail um, calendar invite, and it'll actually include already the Zoom link in there. So that's a really awesome integration, really nice tool. You can also include notes. So things that people are gonna ask, I'll show you what the finished product looks like, but you can put in whatever notes you want them to have. 
And then obviously you can create a custom event link where you can actually send this wherever you'd like it to. And I usually just pick random colors. I don't think any of these really designate anything other than just knowing that they're different. Okay, so next what you'll find out is, is um, you can change the uh, duration, right? So you can add custom or you can just put 15 to 60 minutes. Now, this is date range. So this will tell you how far out in advance. So we have a lot of guests that, that come on our show. Uh, and we're booked right now. This At the time of recording, this is October. We're booked through April of next year. So obviously, we're way, way, way booked out. Something that's really cool that you can do is you can actually schedule an event. So let's look at this. If I wanted to change this, um, I can actually apply, say I'm unavailable, or I can apply to just this date or to all Tuesdays. So you can add it once, make it recurring, and every single Tuesday from here, henceforth, you will be available on Tuesdays between 3 and 5 p.m. So that makes it really, really, really easy. You can also go to your advanced settings uh, and you can show availability in 15 minute increments or you can do event max, right? So if you only wanna have one interview per day, you can send it to one, right? So you can not only set buffer events, this is what I was talking about with coaching clients. So you can buffer it to put, hey, I wanna, if I'm gonna have more than one, right? I only have one, so it doesn't matter, but I wanna put three hours between events because I really need time to be able to focus on what I'm focused on and so on and so forth. Um, the last thing too that I changed was uh, last minute uh, last minute schedules. So actually this says prevent within less than four hours away. Uh, actually now I'm seeing that, I'm gonna change that right now and probably say 48. Uh, I had actually hadn't even seen that it was only four hours. So you can easily change that very, very quickly under your advanced settings to where you can really set and modify and control things. Because the last thing you want is to create an automation tool that makes your life harder or makes your life more complicated or confusing. Uh, so you can do that. You can actually also copy availabilities from other events that you've created. If you're like, I really like the settings for the other one, let's just mirror this one and shadow it, right? So you can do that. It's really, really simple to do. Uh, you can hide it. I've never done this. I don't know what the primary purpose of this other than maybe it's just an internal event, a secret event. Um, and I think actually it gives you a description. You'll want the event type. This makes sure events only visible to whom you choose. Okay, so yeah. So if it's an internal thing, you don't want everybody to know about it, you can actually make it a secret event, which is a cool feature too. Okay, next you're gonna do invitee questions. So this is a big one for me because obviously I need to know who the guest is that's coming on my show. Uh, another thing that's really gonna be beneficial, and this is a paid feature, this is an additional advanced feature, is they can actually enter their phone number. And the reason being is because you'll see down here that I actually send text confirmations. So we'll have text reminders here where my show rate for my show is extraordinarily high. It's very rare that we have a no-show. And I think primarily is because we send both multiple email confirmations, email reminders, and text reminders. So it's very, very challenging. They'd have to really goof up and be pretty blatantly negligent to actually miss their scheduled uh, podcast um, uh, event with me, right? Uh, so what you can do is you can actually personalize each and every one of these, right? So what I did is I just put in additional notes and things of that nature, and you can actually add in these little custom things where it'll show event time and date, and it'll actually just pretty much do that automatically for you. You're just gonna add in your own text around this, uh, but it looks really good. It's really packaged up nicely, looks super professional. This stuff I did not have to add. I only added this text around, this is generic. This is what automatically comes standard with it. I just added the text in between to just let them know specificities as far as what I was looking for uh, when they actually booked. Okay, this is really, really cool. Uh, I've actually turned off cancellations. They have to reach out to us to cancel. They can't just cancel automatically. Reason being is I want them to respect my time. If people can cancel up to the date, the time of the meeting, I don't like that. So I've actually turned that off. And you can see I did that here. Include cancel and reschedule links and notification. Mine is turned off for that very reason. And I said, if please reach out to support at chrismichaelharris.com. If you need to reschedule, we do not allow auto rescheduling. I would recommend doing this unless it's, I can't even think of a situation I wouldn't do this. I would really recommend doing this. I think this is a good feature. Uh, you want people to respect your time. It may feel like a, a little, you're being a little ridiculous, but I honestly think that you need to protect your time. Um, okay, so I, I mentioned about feedback. This is how I use it. Okay, so email follow-up. One of the things that I've done, this is podcast related. Uh, thank you for taking time to join my entrepreneur hour. My team uh, will be in touch when this goes live. In the meantime, I greatly appreciate if you, appreciate if you could drop us a review on Apple Podcasts. So I have an ask, right? And I mentioned this to them. I say, hey, you're gonna get an email from me after we're done here. And it's gonna ask you for a review. The link will be included. But So this actually is gonna send, and you could change the time that it sends. So if I say, hey, it's gonna send you tomorrow, I send it 15 minutes after while it's fresh in their mind, so they're looking out for it. 
uh, and that's great. And you can use a no reply email address if it's something that's a little bit generic and you don't want them to have your actual specific email address. Uh, you can actually add that as well, which I think is another really cool feature. Uh, again, text is pretty, pretty simple. You can just set the designation as far as when you want to text them, uh, but it will text them uh, automatically. And again, it is, it is an additional cost, but it's, I think it's like $5 a month. It's not a big deal. So that is that. Actually, let's um, uh, let's save this because I did make some changes. And we will now go to the confirmation page. So I, I just used their generic confirmation page. You could use a landing page if you had something that you wanted them to prepare for beforehand or review or what have you. But after they specifically with client work, you could you could do that um, where it says, hey, prep on this or submit that. Or if you have something you want them to be doing prior to your actual meeting to prepare for it. Uh, you could use that. You could also, if it's something that you want them to schedule thereafter, you could actually schedule another event, right? So you have that option as well. Uh, and then also, and this is a, a cool thing that I don't use in this capacity, but you could, where you actually collect payments ahead of time. So again, with clients, or uh, if you do, you do any kind of coaching or things of that nature, uh, you could automatically just collect right here, which is a really, uh, really cool feature. So we can go view this page live, and I want to show you what that looks like. All right, so here's all of your notes that you added beforehand. Uh, and then what they'll see is they'll have availability. So you'll see, again, I mentioned that I'm booked out pretty far on my inbound podcast request. We actually have a wait list right now because it's just gotten so excessive. Uh, but what they'll see when they finally get to a date that is available, which again, this is the last one available, they'll have the time slot. So this is three, this is a 60 minute time slot. So three to five, this will go all the way up till five o'clock. But what you'll notice is that I put one event available for that day for this particular event. So when they click 315, if that's what they select, there will not be any more availability for this day, right? Because I've eliminated that one time availability for this event for that specific day. So though somebody else will have to come back and go to May. And then you'll eventually see if you have the 270, which is almost a year. So we, yeah. So you'll see this is the long, the furthest out thing goes July because I have that 270, 270 day rolling availability. So that's that. Um, and then I wanted to show you advanced, you know, what I use with this. So well, this is what we send them, um, them being the podcast guests. So if they, if we approve them for the show, we send them a scheduling link, right? But there's a, there's a little bit of a stop gap in between. And there's a reason for that. I'm going to show you, this is why it's really cool that you can integrate your features and actually do the things that, that, you know, um, I think really they, they condition or they prepare your per, your people, whatever context that's under uh, for your show. So what we did was we created a video. So basically what we did is we're explaining to them what we're looking for as far as audio, as far as lighting, as far as so on and so forth. I'm talking to them about how to prepare for their episode, right? I'm going to show them the differences between what it looks like to have good lighting and a good microphone, what a good microphone sounds like. Uh, and all these various functions. So that's something that obviously I didn't do with Calendly, but it's something that uh, you could do and, and build it around whatever it is that you're providing. Uh, next, I just built it. It said, here are the good webcams I recommend to record an interview. Uh, here are the good microphones that I recommend, you know, that are lower entry level that they're not going to break the bank on. And then here is how they can test their internet and actually included a link there. And then they can sign here, which basically says, hey, I agree to your terms and conditions. Now, the reason I did that is because I didn't want people to randomly find this page without signing something and we could track them down. And also, it's just kind of like we wanted them to sign, honestly, because they just take it more seriously. When they click this, it will take them to here, right? Now, we could have embedded it. We could have embedded the, the actual calendar right here, but I didn't want them to skip. I wanted them to actually confirm that they had actually you know gone through and they wanted them to sign on it to acknowledge that they had gone through it and they had read our specificities and our requirements. So... That's the reason we did it that way, but you could embed it and many people do that as well. I don't recommend it. I think you, there's a degree of making yourself too available and putting it on your website. I, I love I love putting the link there to go to the event, but I, I really don't think that I would give them the calendar option without some kind of request. I, again, I think you make yourself too available and there's something to be said about having to go through some kind of hurdles to get to you specifically. So uh, that's the basic way that I would use it. You can go through all the various settings and such. Um, but a lot of it is pretty straightforward as far as, you know, you can add other users, uh, calendar connections, so you can link it up with your Gmail, stuff like that. And then your overall generic link, there's apps, uh, different things you can connect with it, right? So this is pretty cool, different functions and features you can add. They actually have various apps you can connect with, but overall, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. And I think that's the beautiful thing about it is the simplicity of this tool really makes it stand out. It really makes it 
uh, to be and honestly it's it's even gotten more complex than when i started using this tool they're actually based out of atlanta which is where i was at the time that they founded this company uh, and it was just seamless right and it was just it got it, it accomplished what it needed to accomplish so i think it's one of the better ones that's out there uh, and hopefully it gives you some ideas as far as how i use it in the capacity that i use it and maybe you can use it in your own capacity but it gives you ideas as what's possible what you can change and modify which i think are really really awesome abilities that maybe you wouldn't see with other scheduling tools so i hope you guys like this video again make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel hit the bell for notifications don't forget about checking out startup you if you're interested in entrepreneurship or you have an idea that you want to pursue to start a business venture startup you is where you want to be check that link out below in the description and i will see you guys in the next one yeah.